The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists, led by pilgrim of the 21st century Safari Skak, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Scientific expedition Trails of Nomads reached the star city in Moscow. What is the record set by Talgat Musabayev when flying into space? How did Aydin Aymbetov, who was in space, influence the development of Kazakhstan's science? How many satellites does Kazakhstan have in outer space? A person who has set the goal of becoming an astronaut should not limit to visiting a cosmodrome, even such a large and famous one as Baikonur. Sapar Skakov paid a visit to the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City in Moscow, not as a tourist, but as a real pilot who intends to fly into space. He passed a number of tests. <laughs> Today we arrived at the Cosmonaut Training Center. Here cosmonauts undergo tests and training for up to eight years. We see three halls, Soyuz, Mir and ISS. The ISS is the international station. We will show you everything. On what simulators are cosmonauts being tested, what kind of tests they undergo, how their health is checked. A person intending to become an astronaut firstly must have good health. Saparis Skakov was 75 years old during his stay at the Cosmonaut Training Center. The doctors decided that he was fit for testing. Undergoing medical examination, the team members saw a portrait of Aydin Aymbetov in the doctor's office. As it turned out, this is the office of the doctor who sent the third Kazakh cosmonaut into space. In the corridor leading to the first section of the Cosmonaut Training Center, that is to the test complex on the Soyuz spacecraft, there are portraits of Kazakh cosmonauts Tokhtar Aubakirov and Talgat Musabayev. All three Kazakh cosmonauts underwent training at this center and descended into space on the Soyuz spacecraft. Sapar Iskakov also knew how to manage the apparatus, which was put into operation in 1967. A special device similar to a stick is used to control the ship, because in such a crammed cockpit, it's impossible to push buttons with your own fingers. In addition, in a spacesuit, movement becomes complicated. Sapar Skakov studied the features of the spacesuit. In general, it's better to call a spacesuit not an astronaut's clothing, but his cabin. This will be more correct. Let's describe the main purpose of the spacesuit. When entering space, the spacecraft unexpectedly depressurized. Even if a hole the size of a needle's eye appears in it, the oxygen in the cockpit will escape. At such a moment, the spacesuit with additional oxygen can save an astronaut. In addition, provided that the cabin cools down excessively or conversely heats up, the astronaut will be able to use his spacesuit for heating or ventilation. Spacesuit allows astronaut going into open space. First, it helps a person breathe and stay at the same temperature. Secondly, it is equipped with special devices to maintain communication with a ship's board. It takes a lot of time to learn how to put on a spacesuit and use all its functions correctly. 
Sabaris Kakov begins preparations and takes the first steps. Foreign cosmonauts undergo a two-year training here. Russian and Kazakh cosmonauts can undergo training here for up to eight years. Of course, it is a long time, but on the other hand, space flight requires high-quality training. For example, if automation suddenly fails, astronauts should be able to switch to manual mode. At this moment, all the practical skills acquired during the preparation help. In the second section of the Cosmonaut Training Center, Saparis Kakov got acquainted with the Mir orbital station. It was launched into space on February the 20th, 1986 and operated until March the 23rd, 2001. Speaking of the Mir station, the heroic deed of the Kazakh cosmonauts Kalik Kaharmani Talgat Musabayev involuntarily comes to mind. Talgat Musabayev made three flights into space. The Kazakh cosmonaut has set a record for the time spent in outer space. He first flew into space as a flight engineer on July 1, 1994 and spent 126 days there. And this flight was full of various feats. Within three years, I managed to master the programs and pass exams, which generally took up to five or six years. Thus, I was included in the crew and flew into space together with Yuri Malenchenko. This was the first time in the last 20 years when two inexperienced cosmonauts, who had not been there before, were sent into space. In addition to this risky step, Talgat Musabayev and Yuri Malenchenko took another courageous act. They went out into outer space twice and for 11 hours and 8 minutes repaired the Mir station. Before them, the crew made a collision and the station was damaged. According to the rules, not the crew commander but the flight engineer should be the first to enter open space. Therefore, I was the first to leave the crew. As soon as I got out, I saw that we were flying over my homeland. Kazakhstan, or rather over Balkash, and I involuntarily began to scream. Another feat of Talgat Musabayev is the conquest of endless space. During his next trip, he got in touch from the Mir station to the Almaty High Altitude Skating Rink Medeo and sang Abai's famous song Kozimnin Karasi for the audience of the Voice of Asia Festival. Thus, the Kazakh song and speech were performed in outer space. On January the 29th, 1998, Talgat Musabayev as a crew commander flew into space for the second time. He stayed in space for 208 days and went into outer space six times. He made five exits in one month, thus setting a record. In addition, large-scale space programs were implemented during the flight. During our second space flight, we docked the American shuttle. That is, the shuttle crew was also under my command. According to the rules, those who dock with the station must obey the station commander. For the first time in history, the son of the Kazakh people was the commander of the Russian, American, German and French crews at the same time. During the second flight, People's Hero also contacted with his homeland from space. On the air of a teleconference dedicated to the international presentation of the Kazakh capital, he congratulated all Kazakhstan citizens on this event and sang a Kazakh song. Talgat Musabayev made his third flight into space on April the 28th, 2001. It was a historic mission lasting eight days. He became the commander of the first crew to visit the space station. In addition, he delivered the first tourist into space, the American Dennis Tito. I was full of pride that such an important mission was entrusted to a Kazakh. There were other cosmonauts but they entrusted the task to us. Flight engineer Baturin and I 
practically opened the era of space tourism for the whole world. Talgat Musabayev notes with special pride that Nur Sultan Nazarbayev personally attended the launch and landing of his spacecraft. In 1994, after returning from the first space flight, the first president met him at the landing site. This has never happened before in history. Talgat Musabayev also always landed on the Torgai land. In general, many cosmonauts consider this region their second homeland. Of course, Kazakhstan is directly related to all our achievements in the space industry. This was the case during the Soviet Union and it continues to be so. If Baikonur is a launch pad for space flights, then Karaganda, Jeskazgan, Kostanai and Arkaleg are the land where cosmonauts land. The Kazakh land and the Kazakh people are very hospitable. They always welcome us, give us national gifts. We highly appreciate this. During his stay in Star City and earlier during his visit to Baikonur, Saparis Kakov got acquainted with the structure of the capsule in which the cosmonauts returned to Earth. At an altitude of 140 kilometers, the ship is divided into three parts. Two of them burn up. Only the capsule with the crew members lands on the ground intact. Here is the capsule that arrived from space in 1968. Cosmonaut Komarov died tragically during his return to Earth. After that, this capsule was sent into space to check what happened and what mistakes were made. But everything was done correctly. There was a landing on the ground. This capsule was donated to the Cosmonaut Training Center as an exhibit. The safe return of astronauts to Earth is one of the important tasks of the space industry. In this regard, it should be noted that spacecraft capable of flying has been designed several times. One of them is Buran, which looks like an airplane. On November the 15th, 1988, it was sent into space from Baikonur, and on the same day, it landed on the launch strip of the Cosmodrome. It could carry 10 people, but then there was no crew inside. It made the flight in automatic mode and returned to the base. This was the end of its story. There was no second flight attempt. Sapari Skakov, during his stay at Baikonur, visited the legendary ship Buran. Buran uh, Kazakh Ongar Kazibayev was among the designers working on the Buran rocket project. At that time, such information was classified. But after Kazakhstan gained independence, it was disclosed. He came from the small village of Bogen on the banks of the Aral Sea. Ongar Kazibayev studied at the Bauman Technical School in Moscow. This educational institution is considered one of the most prestigious, providing quality knowledge. <laughs> We hope that young generation will improve and further develop spaceships. During his stay at Baikonur, Sapari Skaka visited the space school named after Vladimir Chalome and got acquainted with the achievements of the younger generation. The greatest achievement of mankind in the space industry is the International Space Station so far. The multi-purpose complex has been operating since November the 20th, 1998. Sabaris Kankov got acquainted with the ISS during his stay in the Star City. Now we have arrived at the third hall of the Cosmonaut Training Center. Here is the International Space Station. The simulator is behind me. Now, as you can see, the door is open and the cosmonauts are preparing for flights. I am sitting at the table where the cosmonauts take exams before the flight.
One of the cosmonauts who sat at this particular table and passed the exams is the third Kazakh cosmonaut Aiden Aimbata. He has studied at this center since 2003. In 2009, there was a need for his flight into space, but at that time, due to the global financial crisis, his flight was postponed to a later date. Then in 2015, he was allowed to launch. Aydin Aimbatov had to undergo all the tests and training again in just two months. So on September the 2nd, he went to the International Space Station. Была разработана специальная научная программа Национальным центром космических исследований технологий. A special scientific program has been prepared at the National Center for Space Research and Technology. It is gratifying to note that this was the first program with the participation of academic teachers and students of our leading university. They set their own conditions for testing in space. Approximately 38 experiments were performed. Aydin Ayimbatov is a cosmonaut who has implemented the fifth space research program in Kazakhstan. Its results facilitated the development of such important branches of science as biotechnology, nanotechnology and medicine. Aydin Ayimbatov continues to make his direct contribution to the development of national cosmonautics. Today, he is the deputy chairman of the board of the national company Kazakhstan Garish Sapari, located in the National Space Center. Мы не приносим чистых денег. Мы приносим косвенный эффект. Приду простые цифры. We do not generate net cash income. We have an indirect effect. As an example, I will give these figures. If we buy space imagery from foreign colleagues, then the loss could be up to 2 billion tenge per year. Now approximately 30 countries buy space imagery from Kazakhstan. Thanks to its own artificial satellites, the Republic can afford to carry out such a project. At the moment, there are six Kazakh satellites in space. Two of them were assembled by Kazakhstan specialists. This achievement puts Kazakhstan on a par with developed space countries. Meanwhile, there are only 50 states with their own devices in space. In addition, Kazakh scientists are preparing the sixth space program. Kazakh cosmonaut Mukhtar Aymakhanov is being tested at the Russian Cosmonaut Training Center. Sapar Skakov, after visiting all the departments of the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, tested himself on a dynamic installation. This device can find out whether a person fits for a space flight. The setup speed for a dynamic workout is gradually increased. At this moment, medical workers monitor the health status of the test subject in the cabin. The complexity of the cosmonaut profession can be seen only in this simple example. It is an apparatus for testing dynamic pressure. It spins up to indicators 2.534 G. Astronauts must withstand pressure up to 12 G. The cosmonauts who have successfully passed the test on board the Il-76 MDK aircraft perform the so-called zero-gravity mode, which is tantamount to a flight into space. Sapari Skakov passed this test too. He fulfilled the weightlessness mode successfully. This regime is repeated 20 times. At this point, the body weight becomes heavier. At 2.5 to 3 g, if my weight is 100 kilograms, then it will grow to 300 kilograms. Instructors control the work of the heart and other organs. They tell you which body position you need to take. For example, during an overload, you need to lie on your back.
All those who successfully pass the zero gravity mode are awarded a special certificate from the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. Sapar Skakov passed this test for sure. After all, he studied for two years in the Ukrainian National Aviation University and got the master's degree. Of course, Sapar Skakov completed only the initial classes of the Cosmonaut Training Center. It takes years of training and great patience to become a professional astronaut. We're confident there will be many more heroes in Kazakhstan who will be able to overcome gravity.